everybody, welcome to Let's Paint Live, our monthly paint along party that we have here with Plaid Crafts. And we are really excited to be back. I think it's been since about September where we've had one. So we're excited and we're glad that everybody is able to join us, whether you're celebrating Valentine's Day on February 14th or Galentine's <laughs> Day, which is a new thing. And we've got a lot of girlfriends here painting along with us tonight. Um, if you haven't joined us before, Paint Night Live is our monthly paint night where we learn to paint a painting in just about an hour. And Jessie is our teacher and she's gonna lead us. Mm -hmm. And um, you'll learn a ton of fun techniques. And tonight we're playing Cupid Cheek. Cupid Cheek, so if you get a, <laughs> get a close up of that. So really fun, we're using folk art paint and Glitterific. You guys can see that <laughs> on the sparkly. camera. We are totally live. <laughs> and again, if you are um, just joining us, we are here with Let's Paint Live. And 2019 is really exciting for Plaid because we have a brand new education series coming out, Let's Paint. So there's going to be a ton of content and more information to come. So make sure you check back on our social channels coming up over the next couple months. And check out our plaid um, blog post if you haven't already because we made a fun cocktail to go with our awesome painting. So we have a sparkling strawberry rosé. So cheers, mm -hmm. everyone. Cheers. Um, hope you're painting along with your um, favorite beverage of choice. <laughs> and um, so, Jesse, let's get started and okay. I'll check back with you. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. So first, I'm going to go over um, the supplies that we'll be using for the painting tonight. Um, we have our base coating set and we have our liner brush set. So as far as brushes, we're going to need our one inch flat brush. We're going to need our three fourth inch flat. And then we're also going to need our half inch flat. And I believe that's all of the, uh, the brushes in the base coating set. So you'll need all three of those. And then from our liner set and our detailing set, we are going to need our, our three round, our four flat, the five round and our um, one liner brush. So those are the brushes we're gonna be using for the painting tonight. I think we are using most of them from both of the sets actually. Um, you're gonna need your 10 by 10 wood canvas or any, um, any 10 by 10 canvas is fine too. We're going to be, um, I have some canvas paper here, but you could, I'm sorry, some palette paper here, but you can use a, a um, palette paper or you can use a plate, anything like that. We've got our pencil, and ruler because we're going to be doing a little bit of measuring tonight, nothing too crazy, it'll be okay. And then for our paints, we are going to be using, um, we've got Folk Art Magenta, which where are you guys at, here or here? Okay, we're going to be using um, Folk Art Magenta, we've got Folk Art Fire Coral, um, we have our Folk Art Seashell, here we've got Mushroom, Wicker White, Faded Jade, Mossy Meadow, um, Jamaican Sea, and then this really pretty metallic rose gold, which I love. And we're going to be using um, Folk Art Glitterific Rose Gold. But for this one, this is kind of your, um, your choice. You can use any of our Glitterifics. You can use gold, silver, we've got unicorn. Um, we've got a ton of really beautiful colors in our Glitterific, so you can pick whichever one you'd like. So let's get started painting. Okay, so the first brush that I'm going to use is my one inch flat. And I'm also going to put some um, Jamaican Sea, about a quarter size amount on my palette. And I'm also going to put a quarter size amount of wicker white on my palette. Okay, so I'm going to get my brush pretty wet. I don't want it dripping, but I do want it to be kind of on the wet side. I'm going to move these out of the way. And I'm going to start, I'm going to load my brush up with some Jamaican Sea. I'm going to add a little bit more water. And we're going to start painting at the top of the canvas. We're going to go from left to right in really smooth motions. You see how it's kind of dragging in there? I'm going to go ahead. We're starting with our ombre here. I'm going to go ahead and add some more water. And I'm going to add some more paint. You want it to be um, a nice solid coverage, but you don't want it to be terribly thick because we are going to be painting on top of this, and so we want it to dry nice and quick um, so that we can finish our painting in just about an hour. So you can see I'm going left and right. I'm going to go about a third of the way down my canvas right now, maybe even closer to half, you'll see. Going left and right, you see how I've got my brush sort of wet, it's not dripping or anything. Keep going left and right. 
And Jesse, I'm just checking in um, with everybody. If you are just tuning in, we are live with Let's Paint Live with Plaid. And Jesse is teaching us to paint Cupid Chic in just about an hour. So we just got started. If you're tuning in, you can still catch up. And we are celebrating Valentine's Day yeah. with this awesome painting using folk art paint and glitterific. So, um, Jesse, you wanna kinda catch them back up? Yeah, we are using our one inch flat brush. And right now I'm using some Jamaican C. And I've got my brush pretty wet and I'm just going left in a left and right motion on the palette starting from the top. And we are going about halfway down. We're starting with our, our beautiful ombre background that our, our arrows and flowers are going to be in front of. You can see I'm, I'm not quite halfway down. I've got a nice thin coat on here. Um, we want it to be pretty thin so that it'll dry nice and quickly so we can paint our flowers on top. It's really pretty. I absolutely love this color. Jamaican Sea. This is our just folk art acrylic paint. Yeah, and I think Will is getting a close up of everybody getting their base we'll coat down on their canvas. So we are using a 10 by 10 canvas. We chose our wood um, plaid surface. You can use any 10 by 10 canvas. And we are doing an ombre for our background of our Cupid Chic. So again, if you're just tuning in, we're doing our monthly Let's Paint Live, uh, February Valentine's Day edition. So we're just getting started with our ombre background. And this is a really easy way that Jesse's teaching us how to do a beautiful blended ombre. So um, just a really good technique for any painting that you're doing. Okay, so you can see I'm kind of finishing up with my Jamaican C. Um, I don't really have it like a watercolor effect. It's, it's, you know, a little thicker than that. I have a nice even coat, but like I said, not too much. So I'm just gonna wash off my brush a little. I, you know, I have some of the blue left in, but we're gonna be blending it anyway. So I'm gonna wet my brush again, and I'm gonna pick up some wicker white, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna start from the bottom here, just going left and right. A nice wet brush, not a ton of paint, just enough to get a nice even coat. And a lot of people ask, um, should I paint the edges of my painting now? And you can do that. A lot of people like to paint the, you know, the sides of your canvas as they're going, because that makes it a little easier, you know, later, you don't have to worry about blending the colors. I usually just go back and do it later, but it's totally up to you. Feel free to continue onto the edges. So just keep going left and right. I've got lots of water on my brush. So, so it's nice and smooth on my canvas. And one of the really good things about these wooden canvases um, is that they absorb the paint and the water really nicely. They don't really sit on the surface as much as they would on a primed canvas. And so it's good for, if you, really, if you want to paint watercolor on these, right. it's beautiful. Or if you're just trying to do a painting quickly, kind of like we're doing, it'll dry really fast so that you can continue layers on top of it without having to have a ton of dry time in between. So I'm just making sure I get right up to the edges. Okay, let me get some more paint. So you can see we're starting to get toward the middle here where we've got our Jamaican C. So I'm gonna get right up to the edge there and then I'm gonna stop. So I have a nice even coat of Jamaican C on the top and a nice even coat of wicker white towards my bottom. And we're going kind of quickly here, but feel free to pause it if you're at home watching. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna clean my brush yet, but I'm going to pick up some Jamaican C and I'm actually gonna dip it in the water a little bit so my brush is wet and I'm gonna start going in the middle, completely left and right, keep my brush nice and wet, and the, we're gonna start blending it down. So grab some more paint, grab some more water. The key here is watch how I'm going left and right and I'm not stopping in the middle. You wanna keep going all the way, I'm kinda splattering, but that's okay. You're gonna wanna go from the left all the way to the right without stopping, and that's how you're gonna get that nice, smooth, even ombre effect. See, look what happens when I stop in the middle. Can you kind of see how it leaves marks there if you start and stop in the middle? We don't want that. We want it to be perfectly even. It looks kind of like a sky. And so we're gonna go start left and right. If you just wanna go left to right and not back and forth, if that's easier for you, feel free to do it that way. We're gonna blend it right into the white. We're gonna blend the white up and we're gonna blend the Jamaican C down. I have a lot of water in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab some more paint. I might have a little too much water to be honest, but that's okay, it'll dry. It's not gonna hurt anything. I just want it to be nice and smooth. Some more white to my bottom, because it's getting kind of watery. Just left and right, 
not stopping in the middle. You see how that goes? Okay. So after I do this, I am going to go ahead and hit it with a hair dryer, just because for our composition of our painting, we are going to be using a pencil and a ruler. Um, and so normally, I think if we gave this a, just a minute to dry, you know, and kind of chat with our friends, it would be plenty of time to paint on top of this. But oops, I got some blue down there. But since we are um, going to be drawing on top of it with a pencil, we want to be able to erase it if we make any mistakes, and that will only be possible if we dry it first. So see how I'm just blending it really smoothly right across. And it takes time to do this ombre. You know, don't get frustrated if it's not working out. Just keep adding the colors where you need it and keep it nice and smooth. Okay. So I think I'm going to stop there. It's just about as smooth as I'd like it. And I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a hair dryer. So you can feel free to pause at home and run and grab your hair dryer or just pause it and let it dry. Um, but that's what I'm going to do right now. So Jesse um, just mentioned she is going to dry her canvas that we are doing. She just created that beautiful ombre with her blue and her white. So she's going to hit it with a hair dryer so she's ready for her next step. If you were just tuning in, we are doing our Let's Paint Live with plaid. So sorry if you can hear the hair dryer in the back. So either hit yours with a hair dryer to dry quickly or you can refresh your favorite beverage and chat with your friends. We're celebrating Valentine's Day and Galentine's Day here at Plaid. We are painting Cupid Chic, this really fun painting using folk art painting and this beautiful glitterific. If you haven't tried this product, it is amazing. It is the ultimate of sparkle and shine and it is super beautiful. So I think Will's getting a close up on that. Again, um, we are just enjoying our Let's Paint Live. And like I mentioned, this year we have a lot of fun, exciting things coming out from Plaid with a brand new Let's Paint education program. So make sure you stay tuned because if you love our Let's Paint Live paint nights, you're gonna love all the education and fun content that we're gonna be coming out with all year. So let's check back with Jessie. I bet she's almost dry and ready to go. I'm rushing her. <laughs> We need like the fancy, like it comes out of the oven, it's completely ready to go. I know. Routine, right? Like the we cake do. out of the oven. <laughs> like a cooking show. Yes. Yes. And here we're done with it. Okay. So now we've got it pretty dry. We've got it dry to the touch um, so that I should be able to do my pencil marks right on top of my microphones. Okay. The so beauty the, of live, you yes, guys. Yes, exactly. So we've got it dry to the touch. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty much dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab our ruler next. And we're gonna line it up from corner to corner. I'm gonna start from my bottom left corner to my top right corner. And you kind of see, you know, the, the ruler's not long enough, but you can kind of eyeball it for this. It's not a huge deal if it's not perfect. So I'm pretty much lined up here and I'm pretty much lined up here. So what I'm gonna do, I think I'm a, maybe a little out of the picture. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark where I'm about three fingers away. You can see there from the edge. I'm gonna mark there right on my ruler because that's where my line's gonna end. And I'm gonna do the same for the top three fingers or ish from the edge and I'm gonna mark and then I'm gonna do a nice pencil line that way so you should have it you don't want to do it too on um, dark because it's a little wet still but that's okay you don't want to do it too dark because you want to be able to paint over it really easily and if you you know mess up you want to be able to touch it up um, really easily as well so we have a nice line it should be about you know from corner to corner but again we have those three fingers to show us where to stop because we don't want it to go all the way to the corner. This is where our arrows are going to be. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for both sides. So you can see I kind of kind of can see where my corners are. Not perfect, but that's okay. This Nothing's perfect, especially in painting. I'm going to mark there and I'm going to mark here. And then I'm going to draw another nice light line from those two marks to each other. Okay, so you can see now we have sort of like a almost perfect X. It's not, com you know, if it's not completely perfect, don't even worry about it. Um, so the next thing we're going to do real quick is we are going to make f a mark four inches from the left side of the top and four inches from the right side of the top. So I've got my ruler here. 
So I'm going to just make a little mark, just enough so I can see it four inches that way. You really don't want to be able to see this because we're going to go ahead and erase it later. It's just for our, our visual now because we're going to kind of line it up with something. So I've got my little tiny four inch mark and my little tiny four inch mark coming from this direction and this direction. We also want one coming down from the top left. So we've got four inches here, just a teensy little mark. And then another one on our right side, just a tiny little four inch mark, okay? So you can see, just light enough so that you can see where it's gonna be. So here on the left side, we're drawing the arrows now. I'm gonna line up my two corner marks. And I wanna line my center line on one of the even inches. It doesn't matter which one, you just wanna make sure that it's lined up with one of them. And we're gonna draw a line from one inch that way, and then one inch that way. So you can kind of see how our arrows are coming together. That just gives you a nice even arrow. And we're gonna do it on this side too. We're gonna line up our marks on our four inch marks and make sure that I have it, I have it on a five inch, but again, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna go one inch this way and one inch this way. So you can see they should be pretty symmetrical now. We've got a nice symmetrical composition. Uh, we're gonna finish drawing in our arrows. So on this side, I want to start where, remember, this is the one that we measured, so I'm going to remind myself of that. These are the ones that we measured one inch out. These we just measured with our fingers where these were, so we don't really want to go by those because they're not exact. So I'm going to line my ruler up with that, and a good way to make sure that my ruler is even by making sure that I'm perpendicular with the edge of my canvas. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but that's a good way to kind of make sure that you're, you're pretty even. So I'm going to draw my line there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna start with this one where it's measured and I'm gonna go perpendicular with my canvas. You can see here where it's pretty even all the way down. That's how I know that I'm straight. And I just connected those two lines there. You can see that. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing but on the top. So we're gonna go where our measured lines are, our measured corners, make sure we even with those. And it looks like I'm about perpendicular and I'm gonna connect these two. Connect it here, connect it there. And look at that, we've got a really beautiful symmetrical arrow composition um, and it's going to make our painting look really nice since it's nice and even. Okay, so now that we have all of our pencil marks on, we are going to go ahead and grab our half inch flat brush. You can see this one, it's from our, our base coating set. Um, I'm going to set it to the side. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab some mushroom. And I'm going to put about a nickel sized amount of mushroom on my can or my palette, I mean, not my canvas. Don't put it on your canvas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna load my brush up with mushroom. I don't want a ton of paint on it. We're not gonna start with a ton of paint. We're gonna do sort of a I've got some pencil marks. We're gonna do sort of a, like a rough um, we've got our half inch brush or half inch flat. We just want a little bit, it's kind of dry, you can see. You can see as I'm wiping it, um, it's not super wet with paint. So you might want to watch what I'm doing really quick first. I'm going to head and paint across this line. I know it's going to be kind of scary freehand painting for a lot of people um, without, you know, any sort of stencil or anything, but I promise y'all can do it. Okay, so the key is for this part, we're going to make sure if you have your pencil line in the center of your brush the entire time, it can't go wrong. And we have a really light amount of paint on here, just enough so we can kind of see where the mark is. So if we mess up, it's super easy to fix, okay? So we're gonna start towards the bottom, not necessarily all the way to the end. And if you're right-handed, you might wanna start from the left and go to the right. We're gonna start down here, and we're just gonna drag our brush, see how lightly it is, making sure that we have that pencil line staying in the middle, kind of keeping it up and down. We're just gonna keep dragging it just enough so I can kind of see the thickness of that brush stroke. Do you see that? I'm just making sure that's my guide. I'm keeping the line in the middle the entire time and that's how I can make sure that I have a nice straight line. It's much easier than it sounds. It does take a little bit of practice but I promise you can do it. Okay now we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start from left to right because I'm right-handed. I'm gonna start from the top left and just drag down just making sure it's kind of like driving a car making sure you're staying in your lane. Make sure you've got that line right in the middle. And if you feel like you're going off a little, just go ahead and correct yourself. And if it's not perfect, it's a painting, so it doesn't matter. Just keep going down just enough so you can see it. So you can see I'm gonna fill in a little more so I can make sure I know where that line is when I go to fill it in more later. But now I have 
these two are arrows filled in. And this is actually called the shaft of the arrow. So I'm going to call it that from now on, just so you all know. I looked up some arrow anatomy. So you guys can, you know, learn as we go. <laughs> OK. So now we are going to um, get, grab some more paint on our brush, and we're going to fill in these. So now that we kind of see where the lines are, you can go slow or you can go swift, sort of whatever you feel more comfortable with. I personally think it's much easier to get a nice clean line when you're going swift, more swiftly with your speed. So that way it kind of gives you less error to, um, less room for error. So I'm just going to go up. We want it to be, we want to have a good amount of paint on our brush so we don't have to go over it too many times. We're just following our line. And I kind of see these more as like, you know, organic sort of stick arrows. So if it's not perfect, it makes me feel a little better. Another thing too, when we're painting the arrows is that if anything goes wrong and we do have an error that we really feel like we need to correct towards the top, um, most of the top of our canvas is just Jamaican Sea. So it'll be easy to touch up with, um, with our Jamaican Sea paint, with our Jamaican Sea acrylic paint. And then most of the paint at the bottom is just, you know, flat wicker white. It's not until the middle that we're blending. And in the middle of the arrows, if we make a mistake where it's kind of harder to, to get the right color, we're just going to paint flowers there. So it doesn't matter anyway. We're going to cover it up later. So don't stress. We're just filling in our arrows. You see I'm kind of holding my brush at the end too. I feel like it, you have sort of a lighter touch and it's easier for me to control. If you hold your brush down here, you kind of want to shake it a little more if you're, in, if you're holding it like a pencil. So I like to hold mine sort of towards the end. And again, if you mess up, it's going to be really easy to fix. Just adding more paint as I need it to get a nice, clean line. OK. Okay, so now that I have the shafts of my arrows painted, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the arrow heads that we drew with our pencils. And you can go ahead and use um, the same half inch flat brush for that. Here's a little trick. You can kind of mark with your brush where the edges are with the very tip. You don't want to have it, you know, too flat. You can kind of have it upright. You want to mark with your brush where the edges are and pull into the middle. And then once you've done that, you can sort of just fill it in. And that's a really easy way to sort of fill in shapes that you've drawn on your canvas. So we're just marking it and then we pull to the center. And we're going to correct that a little because I got a little wonky, but that's okay. And also if, um, if you don't paint these perfectly, don't worry right now because we're going to go over this mushroom colored arrowheads. We're going to go over them with rose gold and then we're going to go over them even again with our rose gold glitterific. And so that will really cover up any sort of inconsistencies you might have in your arrow. So don't stress about that. So just checking in with everybody for Let's Paint Live. We're painting Cupid Chic tonight in honor of Valentine's Day and Galentine's Day. And Jesse has led us through creating this beautiful ombre as our background, and now she's working on the arrows. So again, if you're just joining us, um, we're so glad that you're here. Let's Paint Live is part of a bigger program that we're doing this year. We have a whole education um, program that we are creating that you will learn such fun tips, techniques. You will learn um, tons of different painting basics and um, mm -hmm. completing painting paintings and it's just a piece of our monthly paint alongs that we're doing yeah. so check back to plaid online It'll be a lot of fun right there's just so much great content we're going to be putting out so we're excited and we're back this year this is the first time in 2019 that we're having our paint night so we're really excited that everybody's able to join us we're using folk art acrylic paint and folk art glitterific and if you haven't tried either one of those they are amazing the coverage for folk art is Mm -hmm. you know first in class and the glitterific if you haven't tried this it is the most beautiful. sparkly shimmery glitterific um, glitter. paint that is out there so it is amazing and we're getting to use that tonight on our finished painting so jesse is just finishing up the arrows um, that she's working on and she's going to keep taking you through this awesome painting in just about an hour so we'll check back with you okay all right so now you can see i've got my 
my shaft of my arrows, and then I have the arrow heads. And if you can see, like it's not really filled in that much, and that's because, like I said, we're gonna go back over it with our rose gold and with our gold, our rose gold glitterific. And so it doesn't really need to be a, a perfectly, you know, perfect coverage right now. I'm not that concerned about it. So the next thing we're gonna do, I kind of have like some clumpy paint because I've had it, you know, a lot of paint on this brush for a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and start fresh with my brush, even though I'm using the same color. I'm gonna get it pretty dry. I wash it and I'm gonna get it dry, and, but I'm still gonna be using the mushroom. So I'm gonna load it back up again so I kinda have like a nice fresh start to this brush um, to work on the next part. So now we are going to be painting um, the bottom of these arrows, which I learned is called the fletching. So these areas right down here are called the fletching of the arrow, and we're gonna paint those next. A little arrow info for ya. Okay, so this is kind of like where a little bit of our intermediate skills come into play, but I'm gonna make it super, super easy so anyone can do it. We're gonna be painting these, um, the fletching of the arrows freehand. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna start at the bottom here, right at the bottom where my arrow is. It's like, we we'll kinda wanna put your finger here so you can get an idea. My fingerprint amount, I'm not gonna touch it because it's wet. But I'm gonna start here, about an inch. I'm gonna draw just a flat line, and I want it to be a little more I keep letting the paint dry on my brush, so I want to have a nice solid line going this way. My paint's drying. Okay, so just completely horizontal lines, just about an inch to match up with the bottom. Now I'm going to draw a perpendicular line starting from where mine ended, going right down, and you want this to be about an inch as well. Okay, so nothing crazy, just use the the width of your brush, use the shape of your brush to your advantage, this nice flat edge. And we're gonna have, just go up and down, sort of half of a square. And this should be sort of a right angle. And again, if it's not perfect, these are technically feathers, and feathers aren't perfect, they were organic. So I'm gonna start, now that we've kinda got that down, I'm gonna do it again on the other side. So I'm gonna start with the bottom one, sort of like a fingertips amount from the bottom. I'm gonna pull down with like about a one inch line. About an inch there. Then I'm going to do the same thing starting where I ended, and I'm going to go right. Get some more paint on my brush. It's dragging a little, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water to make it a little bit smoother. Just going to go right. Okay? So now we've got the top of our fletchings of our arrow. We're going to go... Um, we're going to go this way. It's going to be sort of parallel now. We're going to be painting with our arrow. So I'm gonna start about an inch away from this one, and I'm going to pull up. You just want it to be sort of, to meet up with that one. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom. I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna pull up. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and pull down, just kind of going parallel with the arrow itself. And then I'm gonna pull down here. Okay, so again, doesn't have to be perfect. And we are gonna cover this back up with Glitterific and our um, metallic. So that'll help with any coverage. Okay, so now for this part, I'm gonna start here, right at the bottom of mine, right at the bottom where this line is. You see how my brush is sort of right against that edge? I'm gonna start there and I'm gonna pull up towards the middle. And we're gonna do the same thing down here. I'm gonna put my brush upright, but just so you can see where I'm at. We're gonna start here and we're gonna pull up towards the middle. And you see how that makes that nice V shape at the bottom? And we're just gonna do a quick fill in. See that there? I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna pull up towards the middle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And I pull up towards the middle. So for these, you really just wanna use your, um, the shape of your brush to your advantage. I'm gonna make mine a little longer so that they match up. Okay, and this is the bottom of our arrows. And again, um, if you're not super happy with the shape, it's okay, it just takes a little bit of practice. And we are gonna cover up with glitter, so it's gonna be beautiful no matter what. Okay, so just fill those in. And now you have the shape of your arrows. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean my half inch flat brush. And I'm gonna start with 
we're gonna start on the flowers next. That's the really fun part. This is kind of the, the math part, but it's okay. <laughs> Bet you guys didn't know there's so much math in painting. Okay. So the next brush I'm gonna use, I'm gonna grab my three-fourths angle brush. Okay, and I'm gonna put about a, a nickel sized amount of fire coral. I really love fire coral. This is probably one of my favorite folk art colors. It's a really beautiful color, beautiful coral color. <laughs> It's a tongue twister. Okay, so I've got about a nickel size amount there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to load my brush with it. This is my three-fourths inch flat brush. And can you see my palette? Can you guys see it? Okay, good. I'm gonna show you a little bit of a practice. We're gonna paint a circle with this. We're gonna start, I'm gonna show you on um, the palette, so if you guys wanna practice on your palette, you can too. We're gonna put a line there, just straight up and down. And then we're gonna pull to the left, half circle and then pull to the right half circle. And that's a really easy way to make a perfect circle. And at the bottom, you can kind of fill in if you want, um, but this is gonna make a really beautiful round sort of flower shape, um, and it's gonna be really easy. And flowers, like I said, um, they're organic, so they're not gonna be perfect. Roses aren't perfectly round, so it'll just make kind of a nice base shape. So I'm gonna start with this flower. I'm gonna put it about right here, sort of towards the bottom left of my center. That's where my biggest coral flower is gonna be. And we're gonna make that about maybe two inches in diameter. We want this to be the largest of our flowers, so we're gonna, we're gonna kinda start big. So I'm gonna start with my line there. I'm gonna make sure my, I have a good amount of paint on my brush. And I'm gonna kinda pull, oops, I lift it up. Pull down to the left, and I'll load my brush again. And then I'm gonna pull down to the right. Okay, and so now I have a really nice um, circle shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in because I want it to be nice and opaque. Just following my brush strokes. And I'm gonna kind of fill in any gaps that I left. So we have a really pretty flowery circle shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my brush. And I'm gonna work kind of quickly because I want this paint to stay wet for the next step. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my, oops, my brushes are running away. I'm going to grab my five round and I'm going to put a little bit of the seashell pink onto my palette. Probably about a nickel size amount again. So I'm going to wet my brush and I'm going to load it up with some seashell pink. And I'm going to draw some lines, sort of some squiggles around the edges of our flower um, to create sort of a petal looking effect. Okay, you see how I'm doing this here? Just sort of, you can overlap them and layer. I'm staying towards the edges because we are gonna paint centers in these flowers later on. So I'm staying towards the edges. You can kind of blend it in with your fire coral. You see how that makes sort of a really beautiful petal effect? Just keeping it around the edges. You can even grab some fire coral if you wanted to and blend it together with that. You can. If you press down further on your brush, you're gonna get you know, wider strokes, and if you keep really light, you're gonna get nice thin strokes. So just creating some little loose petal effects around our flowers. And I'm gonna, I don't wanna overdo it, so I'm gonna stop there. And I'm gonna head and clean my brush. So now I'm gonna continue this, um, this sort of flower style. I'm gonna put one to the top right, and then one to the top, or I'm sorry, to the bottom right. Um, and both of these are going to be um, using our seashell pink and our 3 fourths inch flat brush. So I'm going to do the same thing I did. I'm going to pick up some seashell pink and I'm going to start towards the top right of this flower with my little line. And I'm going to make this one a little smaller. I'm going to go swoosh. I'm going to load up again. Swoosh, exactly. It's a technical swoosh. term. And then I'm going to swoosh it down to the right. And you can see that kind of gave me a guide for where my nice circle is going to be, so I'm going to fill that in and make sure I have a good amount of paint on my brush. I'm going to fill that in, and then I'm going to do the same thing right below it. I'm going to start there, and I'm going to pull it down, and it's okay if they overlap because this is sort of a little bouquet of flowers, and of course they wouldn't be all side by side like little soldiers, so it's okay if they're overlapping and creating a little bit of layers. Okay. So for this top one, I'm going to detail it with, I'm sorry, for the bottom one, I'm gonna detail it with my fire coral, so sort of the opposite of our biggest flower. I'm go, gonna go ahead and grab my, ah, grab my five round again, 
and some fire coral. And I'm gonna paint some details on this one. Some more little strokes. Just creating some sort of petal effects. Blending it in. And again, I don't wanna overdo it, so I'm gonna stop there. And then I'm gonna sort of quickly, because I want my paint to stay wet, put about a nickel size amount of our folk art magenta. This is another really beautiful color. Right next to that on my palette. And I'm gonna put the details of this flower above it. Some more little petals, petal details. And I sort of like the contrast of the darker magenta next to the fire coral flowers, so it's gonna be really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna clean, go ahead and clean off my brush. Okay, so next, I'm actually going to hang on to my five round. Oops, I keep losing it. Is this my five round? No. My five round. And since we have our magenta out, I'm going to load my brush up with magenta. And we are going to paint this sort of, we have it in our, here, I'll show you the example real quick. Sort of this tulip-shaped flower. It's kind of, you know, it might be a stretch, but I think it looks like a tulip. And again, we might want to practice on our palette. It's got, we're going to do a shape that looks like this. We're going to start at the top and pull down and we're going to start at the top and pull down again so sort of make like a little pyramid looking point okay and we're going to do that four times it's going to be one two three four and that's going to be the petals of our tulip do you want to show everybody one more time yeah here i'll show you the example one more time so it's going to be four petals you see here you all see it one two three four so it's going to be a swoosh here we're going to do our little um, shape that I just showed you four times. So you want me to practice, kind of get some muscle memory going on your palette, if that helps you, um, to kind of get that shape down before you start on your canvas. But it's, it is really simple. Use the brush to your advantage. You want a really light touch here. We're gonna start towards, you know, if this is our whole area, I'm gonna start kind of right on where my, my, my uh, arrow lies. I'm gonna start, and this will be sort of the second to the left. I'm gonna go and pull down. And then right here, I'm going to pull down. And if you only want to do three of these, you can. It's your painting. I'm going to wet my brush a little. And then I'm going to do another here. And then I'm going to do another here. Okay? And so now that we have our base shapes in, I'm, I'm going to use the same brush, and I'm going to carefully fill that in with the magenta. We're still using the same brush and the same color. And be careful of where the bottoms of your flowers are. If you get, um, if you overlap it a little, or you get some magenta on those flowers, it's not a big deal because we actually are going to paint some leaves over that to kind of cover up any thing you don't like going on the bottom of our tulip. But I'm just going to try to fill it in for the best, the best I can right now. Okay, so now we have a nice magenta flower. Okay. And I'm not even going to clean my brush off, but I am going to wipe it off my paper towel a little to get most of the paint off, but I haven't put it in water. I'm going to pick up some seashell pink, and I'm going to start on the two center flowers, and I'm going to start at the top, and I'm going to pull down. And this is going to create sort of a pretty little highlight on the center to sort of distinguish where the center ones are from the outside ones. And that looks like we have a center of the flower and then we have our outside petals, and that just gives some dimension to our, to our little flower here. Okay, you can add more. I'm gonna wipe my brush off again. And I'm actually gonna put some magenta here to sort of distinguish the inner petals from the outer petals. Okay. We're using seashell pink and magenta for this flower. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush off. Okay, so now that we have um, our flowers bases sort of down, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look back at our arrows. So now these should be pretty dry, you know, and we haven't really filled them in as opaquely as you want them to be. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my half inch flat 
and I'm going to put some of this really beautiful rose gold on my um, palette. I'm going to shake it up, and I'm going to put it right about here. Look how pretty that is. Okay, so I'm going to load my brush up with this. Look how shiny. I'm going to load up my brush, and we are going to paint the arrowheads with this rose gold. So remember the technique we used before to sort of fill them in. You can start at the edges and pull in to make sure you're keeping that crisp line. But we want these to be nice and shiny. I'm going to pull down, sort of create my outline to make it easier for to fill in. Load my brush again. I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. Look how pretty that rose gold is. I just love this color. Super trendy, but it's always really been a favorite of mine. Sort of coppery gold, I just think it's really pretty. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing down on the bottom of our, of, not I'm sorry, not our flowers, of our arrows. Um, on the bottom where we have our fletchings. So we're going to go ahead and paint those rose gold. And you can see what we're, how we're going to treat this. We just sort of make that into a point. We're just filling these in. Just take your time filling these in. This color is just so beautiful. And look how I kind of got it on there. I'm just going to smear it up. And right when it's still wet, you kind of can do that. Kind of a neat little trick, neat little correction. As long as the paint beneath is dry, you can pretty much just wipe it back off real quick, as long as it hasn't had a, a long time to dry. Or if it has had a minute to dry, but it is still wet, you can grab a paper towel um, with a little bit of water on it and just very carefully wipe it away as long as the paint beneath your little error or a little mistake, little whatever it is that you don't like, is um, very dry. So we're painting our little organic looking feathery bottoms of our arrows with our rose gold or metallic, folk art metallic rose gold. I'm going to continue and do the same thing on this side. And we are going to check in with our um, everybody that's painting with us live here in the studio for our Valentine's Day, Galentine's Day Cupid Chic painting. So we can get a close up of what everybody has going on. We got some arrows and flowers <laughs> happening. It's all right. It's awesome. I love it. It is organic. It's, organic. That's, it's paint. It's organic. Like the wine. Yes. We've got Camille doing her arrows. Chelsea's got her flowers and her arrows done with the metallic. So awesome, you guys are doing such a great job. So we hope everybody is having fun that is tuning in with us live or um, watching us paint Cupid Chic on Valentine's Day, Galentine's Day. We're excited that you're here to celebrate with us. Hope you have your favorite beverage. If you are looking for a fun recipe, check out our blog post on Plaid Online. We have a sparkling strawberry rosé cocktail that you need to make to go with this painting. If you're um, painting with your friends or you're someone special, um, makes a really fun night at home to do. So, um, Jesse, thank you so much for teaching us. Absolutely. And we've got, yeah, Jesse, we got, um, I'm so excited to spend this night with everybody. I know. And we have um, a little bit more to go on our Cupid Chic painting. So uh, we're gonna get back to it. Okay.
Okay, so now you can see we've kind of got rose gold filled in. And again, like I don't have my coats perfectly. It's not perfect coverage, but we are going to cover those back up in glitter at fig, so don't worry about that. Um, if you wanted to, I'm not going to do it now, but you could go ahead and fill in these parts of your areas with rose gold too if you wanted them to be solid rose gold. It's your painting, so it's totally your call. All right, I am going to show you one little trick though that I did in the original painting. I'm going to take, you can see I already did it with this brush. I'm going to take the end of my brush and I'm going to dip it in some rose gold. And I'm going to make some cute little details by just swirling the tip of the brush around on sort of the stem of the arrow. And that just makes kind of a cute little, I like the way the metallic looks against the flat mushroom color. So it just makes a nice little, you can see I'm kind of steadying my hand with my pinky on my canvas. Any brush will do. I'm actually using the half inch brush, but any of the brushes will be good because we're, you know, using the back. Some of them will be a little thinner than others though, so. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that off so I don't get paint on myself. But I just think that's a cute little detail to add. Okay, so next, we are going to be grabbing our one liner brush and some mossy meadow. Okay, so I'm gonna shake that up and I'm gonna put about a nickel sized amount onto my palette. I'm gonna wet my brush a little and then I'm going to dry it a little. And I'm gonna load up my one liner, my number one liner brush. This is in our um, detailing set, our detailing brush set. So I have a nice amount of paint on there. And we're gonna start drawing some of these green details in our painting. Some of the cute little stems and sprigs. I'm gonna show you a couple little techniques um, so you can do it on your own in the future. So we're gonna start, and I'm gonna draw a sprig coming out of the left here, because there's a little bit of an opening there. But I am going to start out here because I'm going to go left to right and that's just easier for me since I'm right handed. It's a little tip. So what you want to do is you want to hold your brush towards the end because that gives you a little bit of a lighter touch. And we're going to go very quickly and we're not going to put hardly any pressure on our brush. Okay, so I'm going to do a little line and I'm going to start there and I'm going to stop there. So watch, I'm going to do a little swoosh. You see that? And if you feel comfortable at home, um, starting with your starting with your pencil and drawing a line, that is totally fine. Um, I know a lot of you, it's in really intimidating to just sort of paint freehand, I totally get it. So if you feel more comfortable starting, um, drawing a little pencil line and then following that, you can totally do that at home. Or you guys here can do it. <laughs> okay, so now that we have that, I like it nice and thin. I'm gonna go ahead and use my brush and I'm gonna show you on the palette really quick again. So it's kind of a new technique. We're just gonna press it down and it's gonna make a nice little leaf shape. Do you see that? It's not super opaque since my you know, palette paper, of course, is resisting the paint. That's what makes it work so well for mixing colors. But you can see how it makes it a nice little leaf shape. So you can do some practices on your palette, but then I'm gonna go ahead and start doing it right onto my little sprig here. Boop, see that cute little? We're just gonna smoosh it, and I'm gonna go all the way down one side. That's another technical term, to smoosh. We're gonna go all the way down our little <laughs> sprig. I'm gonna go over back that one because it wasn't as dark as I want it. And then I'm just gonna do matching ones on the other side to kind of line up with the ones I just did. Smoosh, exactly. And see so you have a really cute little sprig coming out of the side. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the exact same thing coming out of my right side and I'm gonna have this one going down to kind of fill in some of this empty space here. So just like we did before, I had a really light touch of holding my brush towards the, towards the end of it. That helps with my light touch. I'm gonna fill it in here. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do some little smoosh leaves. I'm gonna start here, smoosh. And I'm gonna go all the way up this little stem. And then I'm going to match them on the other side. And you can kind of change it if you don't want a sprig here. You can kind of put it wherever you think it's going to look best. I'm going to fill in a little there, even them out. Um, you can have them coming from the bottom or from the top. It's totally up to you. This is just how I think that my composition looks best. So I'm going to wipe some of this paint on because I kind of had a lot for all that smooshing. <laughs> Again, technical term. <laughs> Okay, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint some leaves towards the bottom of our flowers. 
So I'm going to load up with Mossy Meadow again. That's the darker of our two greens. And we're going to do similar shapes to when we did our tulips. So we're going to go from the bottom up. So we're going to start like this and do sort of a V shape. Hopefully you guys can see that. And we're going to actually, we're going to make it a little more closed for this though. So it's going to look more like that, if you guys can see that. So we're going to start here and I'm going to paint sort of a V shape. And then I'm going to do maybe another one next to it because I think two would look good there. You see that? We're just going to use a really light touch and a really fine brush. And then I'm going to use the same brush to carefully fill that in. Okay. And so while we've kind of got this wet, I'm going to clean, clean my brush off. And I'm going to grab some of this beautiful faded jade color. My palette's getting kind of full, but that's okay. I'll find room. And we're going to do about a nickel sized amount of that. And I keep losing my brush. Here it is. Okay, and so I'm going to grab some of this um, faded jade. I'm going to make a highlight on these bottom leaves. So we're going to do that is we're going to load up our brush. And I'm just going to make sort of a line on the edge. Our light is going to be coming from the top right on our canvas. So that's where our highlight's going to be. And you can kind of blend it in a little, or you can just leave it sort of harsher. And then you can even put some more of, of our mossy meadow and blend it. Creates just sort of a cute little blended leaf towards the bottom. Kind of like little doodled leaves. It's kind of fun. It's kind of relaxing just to make up the leaves and the composition as you go. So now that the middle of our flowers should be pretty dry, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my half inch flat brush and I'm going to pick up some, you can see my half inch flat, I'm going to pick up some seashell pink, I'm going to load my brush and I'm going to do our same circular shape just the way we did it and I'm going to make a center for this flower. So I'm going to start with my line and make it just tiny in the middle, swoosh, I'm barely going to move my brush, I'm just mostly going to sort of twirl it. These are sort of little smooth, I don't even know what this one's called. I guess it's not a smooch because that was our leaves. But we're doing our little swirl here and then you can go ahead and fill it in. And we have a nice little center for that flower, sort of a mix between a daisy and a rose, I guess. It's just a cute little made up flower. Um, Jesse's the half flat? It's the half inch flat, yep. We're gonna keep this brush. For this one, to match our little uh, petal color, I'm gonna use magenta for this top one. So I'm gonna, I cleaned my brush off and I'm gonna load it with magenta, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm hardly gonna move it, because see, look, when you do that line, it pretty much fills in the whole area with, that you want it to be in. So I'm almost just gonna sort of swirl it around, if that makes sense. You're barely gonna move it. Just making a circle. See that there? It's sort of an easy way, and then you can use sort of the corner of your brush if you want, and make a circle. I'm going to clean off my brush. And I'm going to grab some of my fire coral. Get a nice even amount on my brush. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I'm going to see where I want it. And I'm going to do kind of a swirling motion on either side. Oops, I kind of flicked it out there, but that's okay. We'll just cover it up. And again, these take a little bit of practice, but flowers aren't perfect. They're organic. Okay, I'm going to fill that in a little. So now we have some nice centers of our flowers. So remember before I was talking about this tulip shape and I said, well, it's kind of unfinished there. So, and we weren't going to worry about it. So now we're going to worry about it. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab our, our th number three round and I'm gonna get some of our faded jade. I'm gonna load my brush up with faded jade. And we're gonna do more of these petal shapes that we've been making, sort of shapes like these ones. We're gonna start and we're gonna cover up. It's gonna feel weird painting right on top of all of our pretty flowers, but layering is what makes it so looks more real, more dimensional. We're gonna paint a petal shape right here, right overlapping both of these. So if you wanna watch me first to kind of see where it's gonna be, you can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to, I'm using my three round and I've got faded jade. 
So I'm going to draw a petal shape. Oh, and see it's a little bit wet there. I've picked up some magenta, but that's okay. We can go back over it. It's not a big deal. It's because we're kind of moving right along here. And I'm going to go this way. It's kind of a pink leaf, but it's okay. <laughs> we're going to cover that. We're going to fill that in with our faded jade. I actually kind of like the pink on the leaf. If you have, if you got some of that pink paint on your brush, you can just wipe it off on a paper towel. And you can even go back later and sort of cover that back up with more solid green if it bothers you. But it actually doesn't really bother me. I kind of like the, the pink tinted leaf. Okay. And I'm going to get some of that excess paint off my brush and I'm do the same thing on this side. And this is still going to be sort of a cute little leaf nest that our tulip is nestled in. So I'm going to start here. I'm holding my brush upright and I'm going to draw a line there. And then I'm going to, oops, my brush is really wet. So I'm going to get some of the water off. Actually, I don't want, I have a little puddle of water that I got there, but that's okay. I'm just going to get it up with a paper towel and absorb it right up. And I'm going to go this way. I actually want it to go out a little more, so we'll start here. There's always ways to correct anything that you don't like in a painting. Easy fixes. We're going to fill this one in too. Okay, so we have these two light green leaves. And they, they're kind of blending in because they're such a light color, but we're going to add some detail to that, so don't worry. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our, our one liner brush, okay? So we're going to our one liner brush, and we're going to paint some more little green details, okay? So we're going to get some mossy meadow, we're going to load up our brush, and we're going to do another little sprig, just how we did the left and right ones. And this is going to be, I think I'm going to put mine sort of coming up this way. I'm going to have it curved again. I'm going to start here, put a good amount on, on your brush, and it's going to be right there. That's where my sprig's going to be. And then I think I'll do another one, maybe coming out this way. Okay? That one's kind of thick, so I think I want to make this one thicker to match it. I was putting a little more pressure on that one, and that's okay. Even it out a little. Okay, so for these, they're going to be sort of like little antenna flowers. We're going to paint lines just to have a really light touch on my brush, going down one side, sort of like a ladder, and then matching on the other side, going up this way. Oops, I'm going to put some more paint because it's dragging a little. Going up this way. I'm going to do the same thing for the one on the bottom. And these are just some cute little ways to make... Um, little sprigs and little stems of greenery to go around your flowers, which are really fun and really trendy because, you know, a little like flower doodling and stuff like that is pretty trendy right now. So this is kind of a fun little way to do it. I'm going to clean off my brush. So now I'm going to use the back of my brush and I'm going to get some fire coral. You can use really any of the pinks for this though, but I like, like I said before, I like fire coral the best. I want a decent size or a decent amount of paint on the back of my brush. And I'm going to make little dots on the ends of these to be like cute little flowers or maybe they're little berries. Just kind of how we did those rose gold dots in this on the middle of our um, the shafts of our arrows. See those there? Just little like tiny mini flowers. And you can swirl your brush the end of your brush around a little if you want it to be a little bigger. You can just do a simple dot, or like I'm doing, you can just swirl it a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and continue that up here. Yeah, I'm using fire coral, but you guys are welcome to use magenta, or even the seashell pink would be pretty for this, or you could even use green if you just want your little sprigs to be only greenery, you don't want any color on them, that's fine too if you prefer green. See that? Just make some cute little details. 
And I'm gonna use the same, the end of the same brush, but I'm just gonna wipe it off with my paper towel. And I'm gonna get some of my faded jade, just the same way that I just did the fire coral. And I'm gonna paint some details on these. I'm just gonna paint a dot on these. I think it'll be cute. I kind of like these dot details for the, for these flower paintings, because I think it just adds a little more detail, a little more interest. See, I'm just doing cute little dots on there. We're just gonna keep on doing that. Okay. Okay. You can even add some dots to the center of these flowers if you wanted to. I think we had them in our original painting to add some more texture and detail to the centers. They're kind of cute. I'm gonna do that. I'm just still using the same brush. I have my one, my number one liner brush, but really any of our small brushes will work. It's got nice little ends for making little dots like these. And this just gives some more detail and some more texture to our flowers. I think it's cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna still hang on to my one liner. It's my, one, my number one liner brush here and I'm gonna load it up with some mossy meadow. And what we're gonna do is now that this is a little bit drier, our light green leaves, our faded jade leaves, I'm gonna go ahead with a really light touch holding the edge of my brush, I'm gonna outline them. And this is sort of just to make them darker so you can see them a little better in your painting. You see that, how we're just outlining them? Just a really light touch, I'm hardly putting any pressure on my brush. We're just doing it really lightly just like how we've kind of been doing all of our thin lines on this painting. You know, that kind of intimidates a lot of people, but hopefully some of these tips are helping you at home. And then I'm gonna do a vein right up the middle on each of them. Just sort of a classic leaf detail design. And I'm gonna do similar to our little antenna sprigs. I'm gonna do some veins on our leaf. And that's just add again, some more detail and some more texture. Got kind of going rogue over here. Oh, too much paint on my brush, so I wiped some off. Okay. Okay, so really, we have most of our painting done here. Hopefully this was a lot of fun for you guys. This is the best part of all. I'm actually gonna get a new piece of palette paper for this, because I'm so excited about it. We're gonna add our Glitterific. So here I've got the Glitterific Rose Gold. You can see how beautiful that is. Can you guys see that? How much it's sparkling even in the bottle. I'm gonna put on my palette and it's, it's so thick and that's why, it, oh my gosh, look at that. Can you see how sparkly it is? I'm put, probably pouring out more than I need just so you guys can see at home. Look at that sparkle and it's still wet. A lot of times when you get glitters, um, they come in sort of a milky like glue base, but this one doesn't. This one has a clear base right from the beginning and that's one of my favorite parts about Glitterific. So I like to use, you could, a lot of people use spouncers if you're applying Glitterific to like a larger area, but I actually really like to use a brush. So I'm gonna use, when I'm doing smaller details like this, I'm gonna apply some Glitterific and I'm gonna dab it on the arrowheads and on the base of our arrow. Look how beautifully that goes on. You can kind of, it's really easy to kind of push around. You can, even though the chunks are really big, you can, it's really easy to move around and it's really easy to get into some like little detailed spaces. I'm not putting a ton on, but I'm just putting enough where I have a nice, even, pretty, sparkly coat. And again, don't forget I said before, if you had any inconsistencies in the um, coat that you put on these arrowheads, this is gonna cover it right up and it's gonna be beautiful and sparkly and festive for Valentine's Day or Galentine's Day or just any day where you're hoping for spring. You can just push it around. Look at those huge particles. Glitterific has, how many particles, Kira, do you know? It has tons of different size particles in it. It's got small pieces of glitter, it's got large pieces of glitter. It almost looks like confetti to me. Um, and that's what catches the light so pretty. It's just really, really beautiful. And you can see how clear it is here. This is as clear as it's gonna dry. I just love that it looks so clear right out of the bottle. You can see exactly how it's gonna be as you're putting it onto your canvas. So I'm just putting a nice, even coat. I just wanna cover up all this. And you could put, the glitter if you're going all the way up your 
arrows if you wanted to. You could get some of our hot pink glitterific and you could put it on your flowers. You could get some of our green glitterific and put it on your leaves. I mean, it's just so pretty. And just adds so much to any painting. You can see I'm just sort of dabbing and pushing it around. You can sort of paint it or you can do like a tapping motion. It's really easy to apply. It's really beautiful. Oops. I'm just flinging it everywhere. Okay. So now as we're finishing up, I just want to remind you guys to sign your painting, sign your piece of art that you've just made in about an hour, hopefully, I'm not sure what time it is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but don't forget to sign it because I'm sure however you did it, however long it took you, I'm sure it's really beautiful. So there you go. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Hold it up, oh, show, show off your work of art. <laughs> So thank you everybody for joining us for Let's Paint Live. We're glad to be back and that we got to spend the evening with you painting this awesome Cupid Chic Valentine's Day painting. Thank yeah, you, Jesse. Absolutely, it was fun. We got to learn so many different <laughs> techniques. So excited. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Anytime. And um, if you were not able to catch all of this live, go ahead over to our Plaid Crafts YouTube channel and you can watch this video at your own time. Um, by yourself or with your group of friends and you can go ahead and complete this painting and we have a whole library of on-demand paintings with Let's Paint mm -hmm. Live. So check those out. Again, don't forget to hashtag your projects and your paintings that you made with Let's Paint Live and Plaid Crafts so we can see what you're creating and stay tuned because we have a whole brand new education program coming out this year, Let's Paint, that you're gonna learn tons of fun, educational paintings and projects that um, we can't wait to teach you. And Jesse will be here and we've got Andy and a bunch of really um, fun things um, coming up this year, so we're excited. Mm -hmm. And speaking of coming up, <laughs> I know some people were commenting if we were gonna announce our March Let's Paint Live. Yep. And we are, so March 7th, join Jesse and the team. We're going to be doing our first ever abstract painting. Mm -hmm. So this is adorably abstract. <laughs> so this is gonna be really fun. It use, um, uses a lot of repurposed materials mm -hmm. and something we haven't done, so we're really excited about this. So we hope everybody had a great time. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next month. Bye. Bye.